Ah yes, the Baron said. When you face the Emperor, you must be able to say truthfully that you did not do the deed. The witch at the Emperor's elbow will hear your words and know their truth or falsehood. Frank Herbert's Dune Saga presents a captivating fusion of speculative fiction and the extrapolation of real-world science. The result is a reality where humans can exhibit extraordinary abilities, abilities that seem to blur the line between the natural and the supernatural. At the intersection of this delicate balance stands the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood, a powerful order of women who master and wield an array of unique skills. However, their clandestine demeanor and deliberate obscuration of the true breadth of their abilities often make them a subject of misunderstanding and even fear. As a result, the Bene Gesserit are often labeled as witches, an epithet that imbues them with an aura of mysticism, despite their capabilities having a firm footing in a distinctly biological framework. In this video, I'd like to talk about the preeminent Bene Gesserit witch, the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim, and how she uses her powers to serve both the Emperor and the Sisterhood. Spoiler warning if you are unfamiliar with Frank Herbert's Dune. While the members of the Bene Gesserit vary in their abilities, Mohayim's status as a Reverend Mother signifies her possession and mastery over an extraordinary set of skills. She had to undergo a special ritual requiring her to ingest a deadly illuminating poison. In order to survive, she had to demonstrate her mastery over internal organic chemical control, which grants the ability to neutralize lethal toxins. This underscores the Bene Gesserit's ability to wield supreme control over their bodies. Through years of rigorous physical and psychological training in what's known as Prana Bindu, they develop an ability to control every muscle and nerve. The Bene Gesserit can also control other internal processes such as being able to regulate their heart rate, blood flow, body temperature, and level of consciousness. In her infancy, Reverend Mother Mohayim began this training through a long, challenging process of self-mastery in physical, emotional, and mental aspects. Rooted in the axiom, my mind controls my reality, the mental aspect of her training facilitates her ability to alter her perception of space, time, and causality. This enables her to maneuver rapidly in combat and strike with exceptional force and accuracy. Interestingly, the level of internal organic control possessed by adept members of the Sisterhood means that they have the ability to dramatically slow down the aging process. However, they do not typically use their talents in this manner so as not to arouse suspicions regarding the true extent of their powers, which would endanger their long-term agenda to control the future of the Imperium. After successfully surviving the trauma of the Spice Agony ritual, Mohayim also unlocked Other Memory, a genetic archive reaching back to the time when humanity was earthbound. This repository of knowledge is essential in providing historical context and understanding, allowing Mohayim to make informed decisions which adds to her value both as an advisor to the Emperor and as a teacher in Bene Gesserit schools. This depth of knowledge also proves instrumental in her efforts to carry on in the footsteps of her ancestors, who began and continued the Bene Gesserit's centuries-long genetics and breeding program. Her clandestine duties include the sifting of humans through the Gamjabar test to find those who excel in self-control and can resist inherent animalistic qualities. In addition to her mastery over the body, Mohayim also possesses unique cognitive capabilities. Like many Bene Gesserit, she can manipulate multiple threads of consciousness simultaneously through Simulflow. This enables her to masterfully navigate and benefit from her other memory and contributes greatly to her exceptional intelligence. Mohayim is also adept in deploying the Bene Gesserit voice, an ability achieved through manipulation of her vocal cords to produce sound frequencies that directly influences and compels listeners to execute tasks, often against their will. This power proves quite valuable in interrogations, coercing targets to tell the truth. However, one of her most remarkable gifts lies in her power as a truthsayer. As a truthsayer to the Padishah Emperor Shaddam Karino IV, Mohayim is able to discern truth and deception in others by analyzing speech, body language, pulse, and heart rate. 
This skill is so revered that the emperor sees fit to keep her at his side, relying on her abilities in his attempts to navigate the complex political machinations of the Imperium. It is worth noting that the Truthsayer's ability is not infallible, it cannot guarantee absolute truth, as its accuracy is influenced by the subject's self-awareness and understanding of their own reality. In this futile and often cutthroat society, this rare talent makes the Bene Gesserit invaluable. At the end of Dune, Paul's ascension to the throne and his outright refusal to be controlled by the Bene Gesserit poses an overwhelming threat to the very existence of the Sisterhood and their carefully laid plans. Even in the face of such adversity, Mohayim resists the temptation to flaunt her considerable abilities in a public display of power. Instead, she chooses a path that's more calculated and sophisticated, while remaining loyal to the longer-term strategies of the Bene Gesserit, who measure their plans in centuries. With an unwavering commitment to the Sisterhood, the Reverend Mother remains focused on using her authority while maintaining a strategic veil of secrecy. This is especially apparent when she discerns the pre-born status of Aaliyah, Paul's younger sister, and the dangerous madness that lurks within her mind. In an effort to silence the toddler before she could expose the secrets of the Sisterhood, Mohayim seeks to use her considerable influence over the Emperor to advocate for Aaliyah's elimination. Despite Mohayim's ardent persistence, however, the Emperor remains unsympathetic to the threat that Aaliyah represents. After Paul's rise to power, Mohayim stayed active as she conspired against him, along with several powerful factions, in a scheme that would aid in the preservation of the Bene Gesserit's crucial breeding program. This conspiracy resulted in the death of Paul's love, Chani, and as a consequence, the Reverend Mother paid the ultimate price for her role in the matter. Ultimately, Mohayim exemplifies the unique blend of stoicism, cunning, and mental prowess that defines the Bene Gesserit. She is the archetype of the Sisterhood's balance between power and discretion, knowing when to wield her abilities for maximum impact while preserving the aura of mystique that surrounds the Order. Her position at the Emperor's side makes her one of the most valuable players in the politics of the Imperium, indicating the true height of influence the Bene Gesserit yield across the known universe. Throughout her time in the Dune Saga, she proves to have an unflinching resolve and tenacious pursuit of the Sisterhood's long-term goals by wisely embracing and even perpetuating her label as a Bene Gesserit witch. She skillfully leveraged the fear and misconceptions of others to create strategic advantages for their order as it made hidden moves across the intricate political chessboard of Dune's interstellar empire. But I'm curious to know what you think of Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim. Are there any aspects of her character or role within the Imperium that stand out to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.